Fox News alert, a rented van plows into a crowd in Toronto, Canada, killing nine people, injuring more than a dozen. A suspect has been captured by police tonight. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Police are still looking for a motive behind this deadly attack. Dan Bongino and Mark Stein with us in just a moment. But first we go to reporter Jeff Harrington, live for us tonight in Toronto. Jeff? Okay, so Tucker, uh, the suspect at this point has been identified as 25-year-old Alec Manassi, and he is from Richmond Hill, Ontario. That is just north of Toronto. His LinkedIn account says that he is a student at a college here in Toronto. But Tucker, let's talk about that confrontation with police when police caught up to the alleged suspect, Alec Manassi. And uh, it appeared that Manassian may have had a gun pointed at police or a cell phone. That's the other report going around. But of course, it will take some time to get that confirmation. And Tucker, he was even shouting things as, shoot me, kill me. Uh, so that will certainly now be part of the investigation as to whether there may have been mental health issues at play here. Uh, the Canadian government says at this point that 25-year-old Alec Manassian is not associated with any terrorist group. And so as such, there is no national threat here tonight in Toronto and Canada, Tucker. Jeff, thanks a lot for that. Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent and an NYPD officer, and he joins us tonight. Dan, you just heard that the government of Canada is saying there is no connection, no obvious connection to a jihadi group, and therefore there's no national threat. How do you assess that? Well, you know, you never know, Tucker, because you don't know how many of these statements are political and how many of them are based on an investigative leads. I mean, it's sad that we even have to think like that. Right. But when it comes to incidents like this, there's a there's a reluctance. And, and I understand. I get it that maybe you don't want to get people, uh, you know, uh, you don't want people to be afraid, whatever it may be. But we shouldn't be letting politics get in the way here. If it does turn out to be a mental health issue, I mean, it's, it's as tragic either way. Uh, but, it, you know, he's not connected to a larger terror group, then that's fine. But, um, you know, I don't think being cryptic about it really helps. Right. But why would that make us less afraid? I mean, right. we seem, I mean, there seems to be a theme here. Every big yeah. city in America, certainly on the coast, is packed with people with mental illness, diagnosed or undiagnosed, yeah. living on the street and crimes. It's not an attack on anybody, an acknowledgement of reality. This kind of thing right. is increasing. So why are we not treating that like a crisis? Yeah, uh, we should. And, and you're right. The intent, I think, from this case is clearly there. Regardless, let's separate two things, Tucker, intent and motive. Motive's right. still up in the air. Maybe mental health, maybe terrorism, um, maybe neither. We don't know that yet. But the intent is clearly there. And two things jump out to me just from the re publicly available reporting. Number one, one of the witnesses at the scene said he hit, quote, every single thing. Now, obviously, if your contact points are people on the curb and you manage to hit just about every single one of them, clearly there's some evidence of intent there. Secondly, there's no evidence there of any uh, screeching brakes, any effort to slow down whatsoever. So clearly, no, we clearly know that there was an intent to harm. And you're right. I mean, this is a big deal. We've seen an uptick in, these, in the use of vehicles to kill people in these horrible attacks. And uh, again, being cryptic in the law enforcement arena, I just don't think helps in this new social media uh, uh, era. So, I, I mean, attacks using vehicles have been increasing in frequency around the world. And I wonder if there comes a point where even the people in charge of our country admit that limiting access to the weapon, in this case a vehicle, isn't really a rational response. At some point you have to talk about why are people doing these things. Do you think this will spur that conversation finally? Well, Tucker, I hope so. We have focused way too long on a uh, kind of, kind of a, a, a fireman approach. In other words, yeah. putting out these fires afterwards with ridiculous measures that law-abiding people don't care about. Whether it's, I mean, it's not a gun control, I totally understand that, but we've seen it in the gun control arena as well. You have to focus on more of an arsonist approach. In other words, we should be starting investigatory fires here. We should be doing better control at our borders. Um, we should be generating better surveillance capabilities on some of these, uh, these people. We should develop a better warning system for mental health problems. And instead, you see these kind of, uh, you know, uh, after-the-fact approaches, and they're just absurd. You've seen it, like I said, in the gun control debate over and over. Right. It's mindless cable news chatter focusing on the weapon. Uh to the exclusion of the motive. Dan, thank you very much. Great to see you as always. Yes, sir. Thanks.